once again, we are very happy to share with you. This is the Church of the Nazarene Baptist District Family Forum. And uh, we're glad to join you in your homes, uh, wherever you may be. Again, on the CBC TV 8. And uh, sharing on the important area of family. As we often repeat, just want to reinforce that these sessions are fo focused really on improving family life in Barbados. And uh, we're conscious and we believe that since the family is the core, the better of our society, we can confront many of the ills that we see by dealing with the root cause. And we believe that the root cause in many cases, the causes are embedded in the family. And this program seeks to deal with some of the issues that arise in the family and offer practical solutions. The um, solutions are such that they, they, are, they can be embarked on. Uh, we know it's hard work, but we believe that if we work hard and apply ourselves in rebuilding our families, that the dividends will be very, very rewarding. Um, today with me again, I have my co-host, um, Reverend Anderson Kelman. Thank you, sir. Very pleasant to be with you. All right. I'm Reverend Farley. And uh, indeed, we are both ministers in the Church of Nazarene. Well, I want to start by reading a familiar passage. I believe that many of us know this passage. I recall memorizing it when I was in primary school. Um, Psalm 1, just a few verses there. I'm using the NIV. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, or stand in the way of the sinners, or sit in the seat of the mockers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law, he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. I read that, those verses, because today our focus, as we seek to speak about the family, our focus would be family enrichment and the Bible. How can we enrich our family life um, through the use of God's Word? And our first session, we are going to be focusing on Christian med meditation, Christian meditation, and we want to zero in to the importance of journaling as part of this process. Uh, Reverend Kelman, you see an open prayer for us? Almighty God, we give you thanks today for this wonderful opportunity, Lord, to be able to share your good news and make it applicable to a very critical aspect of our lives, as our family life. We pray, God, even for your direction. We pray, Father, for your favor. And Lord, we pray even, Lord, this evening as a person would watch this presentation, that, Lord, that there would be challenges as well to make the kind of adjustments to their own family lives. We give you thanks and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, for your words, we'll be back with you in a moment. The Church of the Nazarene Family Forum, shaping our society for the future by enhancing our homes and securing our destiny. Come join us every Sunday at 5 p.m. on CBC TV 8 as we turn the spotlight on an aspect of family life of critical importance to us. Tune in and be blessed. Well, we are back with you. Um, as I always say, perhaps you can call a friend, you know, family member and spend this half hour with us. And today, we want to share with you what we will consider some nuggets of truth as it relates to how we can enrich our family life um, by the use of the Bible. 
Um, there are several books. When we go to our bookshelf, we will find there. Um, but one book I believe you'll find in most homes is the Bible. Well, we don't only want to have the Bible in the home, but we want to dust it off and use it. It is only, uh, only enriches our lives when we use it and apply it. When we apply it, uh, when we apply it to our life. Well, today, as I said, we are focusing on the theme family enrichment and the Bible. And this program, we want to take a look at Christian med meditation and uh, how use of journal, journaling can help improve it. Um, I just want to share with you some thoughts. Meditating on the Word of God is I said to say, in the spirit of prayer is the primary means of replenishing the satisfaction in God which frees us for sacrificial love. The word of God gives life, begets and sustains faith. It encourages hope. It sets us free. It works holiness. It revives the soul. It gives light to the eyes. It nourishes assurance. It helps us to defeat the enemy. And Jesus himself, in referring to the word, said in John 15, 11, these words are these things I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. So here, there is a relationship between embracing the word and the joy of the Lord in our hearts, and then how we are able to appropriate that joy and express it in our daily lives. Reverend Cam, I know I said a mouthful. You may want to zero in or add mm -hmm. some of the things we have said. Well, well, they concur, as expected, uh, Farley, uh, in terms of uh, what the Word of God ought to, to do and the effect it should have on, on the individual. Mm -hmm. And uh, it kind of collapsed it into uh, the, 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 the great commandment, into loving yes. God first and foremost yes. mm -hmm. and loving other. I don't think that any dynamic faith, any dynamic engagement with the Word um, should lead to both of those things occurring. Yes. Uh, one, uh, a deeper love for, for God mm -hmm. and a willingness to obey Him, but also an improvement in our interpersonal relationships, yes. which then have a direct impact on our family lives. Of course. Because you really can't be someone who claims to be, you know, growing in Christ and uh, there's, no, there's no impact in terms of, of our horizontal relationships. So, yeah. so the vertical relationship uh, must be evidence yeah. of the horizontal relationship. and. Yeah. And I keep saying all the time, though, that I, I've never seen a couple in crisis um, where both of them are growing deeper in Christ. I've never seen that. Mm -hmm. You know, um, as long as there's that sense whereby persons are committed um, to God and God's word, then even if there are challenges, mm -hmm. they find ways to resolve them. Yes, yes. And that, that's the critical observation because mm -hmm. once we are, as, as um, Jeremiah stated, eating the word, yeah. figure of speech. Mm -hmm. It means that in digesting it, right. we begin to live it out. Right. And I, I think that the, the, the beautiful thing about that, because we are living in the word, then sometimes when the crises mm -hmm. arise, mm -hmm. um, some, the solutions are there. Yes. Because we, are, we have an intimate relationship. Yeah. Um, sometimes we, we have the Bible, we have several virgins, but we are strangers. Yes. We have to get intimate yeah. with the word. And, and, and you've got to be the word applicable to our lives as well, you know. Um, so we find there's a, a disconnect, a chasm even, uh, between belief and practice. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I, I think they, they ought not to be, though, because if the word is the living word, then it has to 
be uh, evidence in our lives. And uh, recently, I'm not sure what it was I was doing. I think it was one of the all, all morning devotionals in mm -hmm. terms of our church. Mm -hmm. And I was talking about uh, Christ's call, Mark 1, uh, to his disciples. He said, come follow me. Mm -hmm. Right? He didn't say, come, come to church. He says, come follow me. Yeah. Right? And I made the comment, though, that it's critical for us to understand that people follow people. Mm -hmm. Right? And the gospel is the gospel of invitation. The point we're really making, though, is that unless the word becomes incarnate, then it doesn't have the kind of effect that God intends it to have mm -hmm. in drawing persons um, yes. to him. Yes. yes. It, is, it is, as you've said, a living word, and it lives as we apply it mm -hmm. to our daily lives. That's what I, li I love about the Christian faith, mm -hmm. um, because we have a powerful resource. Mm -hmm. And the Bible talks about, um, the Bible is the, reflects, reflects, reflects who God is. That's right. His attributes. Yes. And as we said, as we follow him, we don't become God like God. Right. We become God-like, yeah. godly. Yes, sir. <laughs> the, 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 old, the old song that we, well, I don't say old, but we should say before. Mm -hmm. It says, let trailer lights be burning. Yes. Send a gleam across the wave. Yes. So we are reflectors. Powerful. Right? Yes. Yes. Because some poor, fainting, struggling seamen yes. may rescue, may save. So, Amen. So, so, powerful so, words. Yes, powerful words. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and really, as, as God's, God's word is, re, is reflected and refracted in our lives, then mm -hmm. uh, persons are, are, are drawn to, um, to God because of, 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 of what they see in us. Right. As you say, we're not perfect. Yes. You know, yes. And, uh, and it's a process. Yes, yes. It's a process. And, and even, even, a work in progress. But even that, though, is also an indication of our faith because, because we can say, well, I make a, I made a mistake here. I already messed up. Mm -hmm. I, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Right? And, and understand the element of mutual accountability because even as we return to the issue of, of journaling and, and meditation, um, but that's all a part of the issue of discipleship. Yes. You know, um, you know and discipleship involves discipling others, but also being discipled. Mm -hmm. And a major component of that is the element of accountability. Yes. You know, um, you know so, so even when we mess up, mm -hmm. understand that we have messed up mm -hmm. and that we are accountable mm -hmm. um, to others. And therefore, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. Yes. It's also a reflection mm -hmm. of our own growth and development. Yeah. Um, we, we did say, listeners, that we want to zero in today primarily on the area of Christian meditation. And um, of course, when we talk about Christian meditation, it's not emptying our minds. Mm -hmm. uh, as some persons will think, when we empty our minds, so with what do we fill it? <laughs> yeah? It has to do with, we seek to fill our minds and our hearts with the wisdom and the presence of God. Right, right, right. Can I give you a comment there, though? Yes. Because I agree mm -hmm. with you totally. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that whole... Um, Mysticism is not really what yes. we're talking about, right? Yes. Um, we're talking about the whole idea, really, of allowing ourselves to become so quiet before God. Yes, we can hear uh, Him. We can hear Him. Yes. And, and I think that... The inner voice yeah, as I He think, speaks. Right. And I think mm -hmm. one of the issues, though, of our day and age is our, our, our being very busy. Yes. You know, um, you know, meditation has always been a Christian discipline. Yes. But it seems as though we have kind we, of... We kind of lost it. Yeah, we kind of lost yeah. it in the way. Is it mean? because we are so busy? Yeah. I, but, but how is it that we are so busy, but yet we have so many practical, so, so many gadgets to help us? Yeah. Yeah, I guess, I guess as we get help, we fill ourselves our lives up with more things. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, yeah. so, so I guess that's an interesting point mm -hmm. because... Mm -hmm. I mean, we have, you know, time saving devices, mm -hmm. we, still, we still have any time, yes. you know, um, I guess because we are seeming as though we are on a constant, I don't know, mm -hmm. mill, you know, we're just yes. running all the time, you know. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. but, but, but the point you made just now is important. Listeners, as we talk about the whole idea of meditation, right. quietude is critical. Yes. But you know, Reverend Kelman, sometimes people are afraid of silence. Yeah. Uh, we are afraid of silence. So we have to fill that void. Turn on the television, turn yeah. on the radio, yeah. you know, let's get some noise. Yeah. But I think we have to create the discipline of being able to meditate and understanding silence. And maybe, and maybe the charge of that, though, is a fear of self, really. 
you know, what, what um, you find out, what you find out, what you hear, you know, um, so the introspection uh, yeah, scares yeah, us. Yeah, maybe, maybe some yeah. unconscious or well, conscious rather uh -huh. um, um, issues that we have it, that we that we that we kind of mm -hmm. deal with through busyness. Yes, you know, yes. Um, so we get we get busy, we get we get focused on something else, get distracted. So not only that, the business smothers. That's right. What's going on? Right. In the end itself. It distracts us basically, yes. right? Mm -hmm. So so to hear to hear ourselves. It's a feel of pain, yes. uh, and maybe that's the reason why sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, we we don't we don't make the connection between what the word say to us, and what is evidence in our lives because mm -hmm. because we don't want to really hear our own selves, yes. and so we create a kind of pretense, a kind of a kind of pseudo self. Mm -hmm. I, I think what meditation does really is make us to become cause us to become yes. mindful. Mm -hmm. uh, as a matter of fact, it's one of the, the mindfulness techniques that we use. Yes. Yeah. You know, in psychology, because mm -hmm. it, it causes us to be able to um, to focus on on where we are mm -hmm. and who we are, mm -hmm. you know, and to have the uh, kind of a of a, of a reality check yes. in terms of, of of what needs to happen in our lives mm -hmm. for our own personal yeah. growth and development. And, and as that focus is done through the mirror, the yes. mirror of the word. The word, of word. Um, I I like what Susan Muto says that as she talks about. Education, medication, meditation, sorry. She says that we become servants rather than masters of the word. Yes. So it's not for us to have when we are doing meditation, it's different from Bible study. Yeah. And we all, many of us, engage in Bible study. Mm -hmm. But meditation, you don't want to have 10 concurrences around us as mm -hmm. such. Mm -hmm. It's hearing from God. So Christian. Uh, meditation begins and majors on meditation of the scriptures. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, the other sources we can use sometimes spiritual reading. We can use um, hymns, um, spiritual songs, gospel mm -hmm. songs. We can use nature. We can use life experiences. But what is critical is that scripture remain the foundation mm -hmm. of. Um, Christian meditation. Yes, and I think that, that the the point you made earlier with reference to you know, not 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 needing to have you know uh, ten concordances and reading four passages. Mm -hmm. I think I think just a simple it's a word. That's it. Just a word mm -hmm. or a yes. phrase. Yes, yes. You know, um, is 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 critical that yes. to, to just like just to permeate our yes. beings and and mm -hmm. to fill mm -hmm. our minds and. Yes. And the implications and the impact of that word mm -hmm. or, or that phrase, yes. Yes. you know, as God's Holy Spirit kind of kind of works through us and works in us, mm -hmm. uh, is what is really the the, the, the the real the test of of yes. of good meditation. It is mm -hmm. not about you know trying to to, to do to, to do a whole lot in terms of exactly. Reading. Yes. It's about trying to let the reading yes. kind of do a whole lot on you. Exactly. <laughs> well, when we get a grip on the word, only yes. the word getting a grip on us. Correct. Yes. And and and. Viewers, today we just want to give you a few tips because we, we are particularly emphasizing here Christian meditation. And even, uh, I mean, of course, we've been pastors for years ourselves, and we find that it may not be a discipline that we practice a lot. That's right. But we do practice Bible study and so on, but finding time, and as Reverend Kelman said just now, it is not a rush job. So you may have to turn your phone off. You may have to move the, get away from the television. Find some quiet space. And you know, it's a beautiful thing. You may say to me, well, Reverend Farley, I don't have any space in my house. But you need to find a quiet space where you can have, because this is, med meditation is such a personal and intimate connection with God that you need the disruptions. You can do the whole disruption. You shut off the world. Um, so to speak, outside the world, and you zero into what God is saying to you. You listen. Um, it's really the listening side of prayer mm -hmm. uh, as we meditate um, on the word. So we just want to give you a few tips, perhaps how you can go about doing it, as Reverend Kelman said. Let's say, for example, you want to meditate on Psalm 23. All right, you have Psalm 23. And you may know it by heart. You may not know it by heart, but a simple little illustration, the Lord is my shepherd. Perhaps you don't even have, to, as the Holy Spirit guides you, because they're not necessarily being directed by a pastor or 
but the Holy Spirit will guide you. So let's say you talk about the Lord is my shepherd. You don't even have to meditate on the entire line. You could simply say, the Lord is, and wait there. Wait there. As the Holy Spirit speaks into your life, the Lord is one. And here's where the journaling comes in. As God speaks into your heart, the Lord is. And especially when you consider what you are going through at the moment. What, what are you going through right now? Perhaps even after you complete this session, you can try it yourself. Find some time today. And the Lord is. And there are several, there are several things the Lord is. Um, he's your keeper. The Lord is your guide. He's your friend. The Lord is my door. Get personal. Get personal. He's my shield. And the list goes on. He's my strength. The Lord is. And, you, and you're going to jot these things down as God speaks into your life. Um, and as I said, oftentimes uh, the, the responses that may come to you will have a lot to do with your present experiences. If you may be going through a crisis or if you may be going through a happy time, perhaps. He's your joy. <laughs> and the list goes on. But the, the temptation is not uh, not to yield to the temptation, to rush on. Spend some time. And you can spend some time at that phrase the Lord is. You can spend, you can spend <laughs> the time there and wait on God as he speaks into you. Um, so select the passage to be used. I use an example of this now. But as I said, you, that, that Psalm 23 can take you a whole, a whole month. Trust me, try it. It can take you a whole week as the Holy Spirit. Next time, you could be, the Lord is my shepherd, and you can spend some time, the Lord is my shepherd, and then you wait there. Since he's your shepherd, what he does. So then he's your shepherd, so you are the sheep. And you will relate to how you behave and how you respond. So, that's just one possible passage. But you select the passage, then you take time to read it slowly and completely. Then you read it again and again as the Holy Spirit wants you to tarry there. And once you've read it over and over, you focus on words or themes that God draws into your spirit. And sometimes you've read a passage before, you read it again, you never, you'll be so surprised how much God will show you. Then of course, stay with that focus for as long as you did necessary. Mull over it. Look at it from several different angles and listen for what God wants to say to you about it. And here is where journaling comes in. Perhaps we would we, we, um, break here and you'll come back. And Reverend Kelman will zero into journaling, how important it is in this activity of Christian med meditation. The Church of the Nazarene Family Forum, shaping our society for the future by enhancing our homes and securing our destiny. Come join us every Sunday at 5 p.m. on CBC TV 8 as we turn the spotlight on an aspect of family life of critical importance to us. Tune in and be blessed. Well, it's good to be back with you. And um, mm -hmm. as we said when we finish our first segment, that we want to focus on journaling, uh, which is the act of, of writing down um, your, your thoughts as you meditate. Yes. And uh, there, there are a few things which I would want to recommend as you journal. One is that you try to write down the thoughts in a flowing way. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes we focus a lot on things like syntax and grammar. <laughs> um, for journaling, that's not necessary. Yes. Right, you just want to write the thoughts in a very flowing way. Mm -hmm. And if you find yourself become, becoming like not knowing what to write, go back to the text, read it again, mm -hmm. and allow fr a, a fresh stream to start. Mm -hmm. So write thoughts down. And then the second thing about journaling is that um, as, you, as you write stuff down, you can read it aloud as well to yes. hear yourself yes. in all your thoughts, to hear what you're thinking, mm -hmm. to... To, to process even yes. uh, some, of those, some of those emotions. Mm -hmm. And uh, having done that, then that can become your point of prayer, your, yes. the, the thing that you pray for, mm -hmm. you record it in a journal. Mm -hmm. now, now, what journaling does, though, is that it brings into, into sharp focus um, the things that really matter to you mm -hmm. and gives you a chance to express them. Writing is, is, is expresses and creates 
um, so element of catharsis as well. Yes. So, you, so even negative thoughts that may come to yeah, you, of course. Uh, things that maybe, as you read the text, it, it, it brings up, you know, maybe past hurts, uh, past situations. As you write them out, um, that also gives you a chance for release and also for forgiveness as well. Yes. Uh, for those persons who may have done you wrong, or even for your own self. Mm -hmm. Because in, in many instances, a lot of forgiveness has to do with our own selves. We, we, we sometimes, you know, walk around with feelings of guilt, you know, and anger at our own self. And therefore, when those thoughts emerge in our journal, it gives us an apt opportunity to be able in order to forgive and to, and to release mm -hmm. and, and, to, and, to, and to free ourselves. As a matter of fact, the act of journaling is really a very freeing mm -hmm. exercise, you yes. know. Um, uh, when we journal well, it can result in us feeling uh, a lot stronger and a lot freer mm -hmm. into the prostate issues that may be impacting on us. Yeah, one, one person in referring to journaling says it's a tool for survival, a life raft in life storm. Also, it provides a way for recording major turning points mm -hmm. in our lives. And once we've written, Reverend Cameron, we can probably always go back to ah, it. Ah, this going to make. Yes. You go back to it as well and mm -hmm. read it mm -hmm. and see where, where we've come. Mm -hmm. I, I, I found, uh, I discovered journal when I um, was in my um, was a seminary um, as, a, as a tool. And of course, there, there's a lot of, of, of deep, you know, um, Psychology behind journaling, which, which yes. I won't get into necessarily, mm -hmm. um, but it gives us a chance really to, to to develop a relationship with our own selves. Mm -hmm. Yes, you know, that's what's kind of strange, right? Yes. You know, yes. Yes. with your yes. own self, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, but yes, and the journal give you a picture, really, of what's yeah. going on inside. Because, because I find there's some folk who who, who genuinely mm -hmm. don't know themselves. That's you know, true. That's right, true. and uh, and and oftentimes the, the other person is always the problem. Yeah. You know, yes. so journaling gives a chance yeah. to really... And, and you see the thing about it, you're journaling, and there's the whole idea of pray. Right. There's the, there's the advantage of having the Word of God, that powerful combination. And, and the, main, the main quality of journaling yes. is what we call the idol relationship. Yes, right. Right, yeah. I don't get the technical, the mm -hmm. idol relationship, right? right. Mm -hmm. uh, where you're actually looking at yourself, you know, um, doing some introspection. Through the Word? Process, through the Word. Through the Word. And that's, that's the point, though, because, yes. because, because without, without the Word... Then we can become. We can gloss over a lot of things. We can like, like Mickey Mouse. Yes. We knock the ball over, <laughs> run, run around, knock it back over, you know. I think we're great, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But the world helps us to understand that there's still some distance to go. Yes. Right? Yes. And, and, and therefore it keeps challenging us mm -hmm. uh, to, 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 to better, to go deeper. Yes. yes. Right? Uh, as, we, as we engage our, our own selves. Very, very, very important a tool. And, and I, I really want to, to emphasize, as well, if I did, the importance of the Christian disciplines. Yes. Um, meditation and journaling is one that's been thrown on the back burner, I guess. Mm -hmm. The Reformation movement maybe didn't think it was very important, but I think with all reality now in terms of how how busy we are, you know, how how we always run around, you know, the chickens yes. the heads cut off. Yes. I think that that causes us to mm -hmm. really want to create yes. that sacred space yes. uh, for meditation for journaling. Okay. Thank you so much, and there's so much we can talk about it. If you surely need additional information, you can connect with us, and we'll be glad to share with you. Um, there's a whole wide world of knowledge. But um, thank you for listening today as we focus on enrichment, family enrichment, and the Bible, and as we zeroed in on Christian meditation and journaling. Father, we thank you for this discipline. We pray that even those who listen but embrace some of the principles that we have shared. Guide us into all truth. This is our prayer for Christ's sake. Amen. Listeners and viewers, very glad to share with you. God bless you.